What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Friday. Do you think God is Friday? Let's do this. We save the best for last. Luke chapter 14, verse number 28. Uh, Jesus is giving a strong, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you noticed this whole chapter. It's kind of strong. He started out, of course, us talking about the narrow path. Um, Then he's talking about how the kingdom is a feast, but not everybody wanted to come in. Some people wanted to make their excuses. Check this out. Verse 28 says, hey, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. He goes, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Because if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees you is going to mock you saying, ha ha, this person began to build and was not able to finish. He goes, or I'll give you a different illustration. He goes, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Wouldn't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, so this is the summary statement. This is the principle, the teaching. Walk away from these two illustrations. He goes, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Ah, strong words. You know, um, normally, you know, your Bible's broken up into sections and the editor, whether it's, you know, Nelson or whoever, they'll put little headers in there. Almost every Bible I've ever seen has a little header that says the cost of discipleship. And, you know, I I think that's a fair enough uh, kind of title for this section. It's saying count the cost. If you if you needed to go and, and build something, you first figure out, okay, do I got the labor? Do I got the do I got the materials? Do I got the know-how? I gotta figure this thing out. Do I have what it takes to build this thing? Because there's it's kind of embarrassing if you start building something and get halfway through and be like, I can't finish. And what makes it even more embarrassing is if you're a king and you go to war and you just didn't do the numbers right and you got a bunch of men killed and you lost your kingdom. And like this is embarrassing stuff. He said, So imagine though that like, no, you are committing to be a disciple of Jesus. I need to prepare you. It's going to cost you something. And everybody, that cost is going to be a little bit different. I know people, I remember being a youth pastor, and I remember having kids that would lie to their parents because their parents forbid them from coming to a Christian church. They would lie to their parents so they could come to church. Um, There's that fine line, like, okay, I got to honor my parents, but I want to love Jesus. Uh, You know what? It may cost me, you know, I remember becoming a Christian as a teenager and following Jesus at a radical level. It cost me some friendships, man. I just, I wasn't hanging out doing the same things I used to. And I was against certain things that before I would have easily been, been a part of. And so, you know, it cost me that, you know, I think it, I think it costs you time. You know, the main thing it's going to cost you is this, it's going to cost you your ego and your sinfulness and your selfishness and that sense of pride that dwells within us all. That thing's got to go because as a disciple, this is, this has always been my working definition. Um, I don't remember who I got this from, but it was a it was a, a more of a, of a Jewish historian who was talking about what it meant to be a disciple in the days of Christ. And he said that the goal of a disciple was not just to learn what the master knew. It was to become who he was. Now, I think if you just take the first part of the definition, if you just said, no, no, I just want to know what Jesus knows. That's not going to cost you that much. Like, is this just knowledge and information? Maybe the time that it takes you to to mine that information, to read and to study. It'll cost you that, but like to become like Jesus, ooh, well, it cost him his life. Um, When he was hanging on the cross, uh, out of his 12 disciples, one of them is the one that betrayed him. The other one denied him three times. Nine of them just ran for their lives. And then one of them was actually at the foot of the cross. And so for Jesus, it cost him his friendships. It cost him his life. Um, in that moment on the cross that cost him all of his dignity. You know, it, it, I just want you to be aware that there's a narrow path and it does in the short term sometimes cost you something. But this is what you always see. The Apostle Paul said that what God had in store for us, we couldn't even compare to this present age. When the disciples noticed that, hey, I, I left my job for this. I left my family for this, Jesus. And Jesus actually responds and says, hey, and your sacrifice has been noted and you will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. And so I I would encourage you like, hey, to say yes to Jesus is the greatest yes that you'll ever say. But Jesus doesn't want to do a bait and switch thing where he says, hey, follow me and everything will be easy. Follow me and it'll all go your way. Follow me and you won't have to sacrifice anything. As a matter of fact, I'll just give you all kinds of blessings. That is not the gospel that Jesus preached. He actually said, 
You want to find your life. You have to lose it. You have to actually lay it down. Jesus said, if you want to follow after me and become my disciple, pick up your cross daily. So to actually experience God's best, it does come at a cost. But here's the thing. There's a principle of life. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. And I think that what you'll reap is the most abundant life possible. Church, I love you so much. God bless you. I will see you this weekend.